Good afternoon, Nerd Sam, and welcome back to Atlanta, Georgia. We are here coming to the conclusion of day three of our three days of coverage at Supercomputing 2024. My name's Savannah Peterson, here with my fellow nerd, John Furrier. Yes, of course. We've had some really excellent conversations this week. This has been an AI show, because high-performance high computing is the AI engine. That's the clusters we've been talking about, and AI doesn't work without data, and so the whole storage industry's been upside down and growing and changing. It's a whole nother S-curve opportunity because the data is stored somewhere, it's different storage patterns, but it's still stored. So this next segment will be, again, very much compelling. Very cool. Yeah. Jyothi, thank you so much for taking the time to come hang out with us. Hey, thank you for having yeah, me. Good it's to so, see you. always great to be back on the queue. <laughs> I know, I was going to say, you, you've been, you're, you're a VIP OG. You've been on the show many <laughs> like times over the years. Very impressive. Obviously, this is going to be your best segment yet. <laughs> well, o we'll, always we'll do our best. Continuous improvement. How's the no for you? It's been great. It's, it's a great event for, for us. DDN's been the leader in high-performance high compu computing for a long, long time. Uh, these are our, mostly our existing customers. It's rare for a CMO like me to come into a show where everybody's an existing customer. <laughs> Usually That's going to feel kind of nice. Yeah, Talk exactly. about mission accomplished exactly. on that front. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, there's also a little bit of pressure to ensure that they, f they get the right experience, the messaging, and all of that good stuff. But yeah, this is, this is our wheelhouse. We love high performance computing. We love the fact that it's moving into the world of AI, those customers, and we're there to yeah. partner with them on that journey. It's so much in your wheelhouse that you won an award yesterday. Yes, uh, for the 14th time in a row, I think, if I remember correctly. Casual flex. Yes, yes. And this was the best HPC storage product, correct? Correct, correct. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, credit to the team. I, I can't <laughs> take any credit for it. Credit <laughs> to the, the engineering team, the founders that have built what is a phenomenal product that performs at scale in the largest AI and high performance computing environments in the world. Alex was on earlier uh, in, the, in the session here in the queue with the show. Uh, we talked about this is an engineering show. This is about proof is in the pudding, sizzle, not important, let me see the steak. And you guys deliver on that. But you also talked about where you guys are engineering uh, with customers, the three areas, space in the data center, power and cooling, and price performance. Correct. All the energy, all the wood is behind those three arrows. And then, so now, how do you get that out? You got customers, but you're jumping on another S-curve. So now your job is to ride that S-curve and communicate to the customers. Take us through the mindset, because one, you got to keep your eye on the game, engineering the solutions, but you're knocking down big customers. What's the plan? Yeah, so that's a loaded question, so I'll try to unpack that, <laughs> right? So we'll start with our roots. Our roots are obviously in high-performance computing, which is in the data center, and what matters in the data center? Power, space, cooling, that sort of stuff. With AI, as you know, let's be honest, there's not enough power in the world to power all the AI that the world requires, yeah. right? We're hoping that the infrastructure gets more efficient overall, et cetera, but what we do at DDN is we try to get your GPUs to perform 10x more efficiently. That means they consume a lot less power. We also ensure that the data center is shrunk by at least five to 10x in terms of space mm -hmm. because we're in the largest data centers in the world. For example, at, at XAI, which is the largest AI super factory in the world, that's in Memphis, and we've been able to, you know, the 100,000 GPU and growing to 200,000 in short order, we've been able to help them accomplish this massive effort and shrink down their data spa uh, center space as well as their power requirements and help them accelerate their AI outcomes within that data center. Which is literally what everyone wants. Exactly, and when you do it at scale, you can take that blueprint and apply it to a 5,000 GPU environment, a 10,000 GPU environment, or a 100,000 GPU environment. So yeah. that is the in the stack, in the data center value proposition, right? But that's just in the training aspect of AI. There's a whole other ball of wax around above the stack, which is the LLM and RAG inferencing, that's where we're moving, where we're trying to partner with NVIDIA and their microservices, NIMS and NEMO, mm -hmm. uh, Triton, yeah. Drive. We're integrating all of our data infrastructure into their NIMS mm -hmm. so that we enable our customers to build these applications faster what, without spending the crazy amount of money that, that they think they need to spend. You know, our CUBE research team has been looking at some trends, and I want to get your reaction to some of the, our observations. We're going to start digging in around so this generation that we're on, you mentioned some of the scale things, is that this, we're at a new era, we've never seen this before, where if you're operating at scale, you're seeing problems that no one else is seeing because you're at a scale level, you're in rarefied air in a way. And so you see AWS, NVIDIA, DDN, 
that's a huge competitive advantage. Okay, so what do you see there? How are you taking that down? Because now it's hard to replicate. It's almost a barrier to entry, again, from a competitive standpoint, so I can see that being kind of benefit to you guys, but what are you seeing at scale now? Because the apps are coming, the new software's going to be rewritten. We haven't even seen the new set of software coming on top of this. Certainly, the first wave is old algorithms with transformer equals this, and some cool stuff's happening. A lot of physical work being done on the footprints, but the software side's going to explode. So what have you guys seen at scale? First of all, do you agree with that statement? And two, what do you, if you agree, what do, what do you see? Yeah, I do agree with that statement with a short caveat, right? It's not everything is a, either a tops down or a bottoms up approach. What I mean by that is some people think we need to start up the AI factory and data center level and move up into the application layer. Some people think, I don't care about the infrastructure. I'm going to take GPU as a service from a cloud provider. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go build my application so I don't really care what's happening behind the, behind the seats, right? So for us at DDM, the challenge is to cater to both those outcomes by working with both the NVIDIA cloud providers, the hyperscalers, et cetera, as well as NVIDIA themselves. Because uh, let's be honest, like 90 plus percent of the AI market is driven by NVIDIA. They are the gravitational force and we're the, yeah. the planets and the satellites spinning around them, right? So we, we just need to ensure that the above the stack integrations and the below the stack efficiencies that we drive are fully integrated. Also, John, I mean, you talked about software applications being built. Yeah. These software applications don't necessarily yeah. care about what's under the covers. They just want business outcomes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when they speak to someone who's got a HPC heritage or a storage heritage yeah. or data heritage, they're like, I don't get the connection. Like, yeah. So what is it that you guys do for me again? I just build my applications over you know, using AWS's tools or GCP or OCI or whatever. What, so what we've got to convey to them is how important an efficient, high performance data infrastructure is yeah. for AI, yeah. Yeah. for their applications to succeed. I'll give you one example. Read and write performance, basic stuff. Traditional data infrastructures and storage uh, companies yeah. focus on read. Like, oh, read the information from storage, it's sitting there, read, read, read. AI is all about write performance. <laughs> it's writing, it's <laughs> checkpointing, nonstop. Yeah. If your infrastructure, your data infrastructure is not supporting that, your data intelligence layer yeah. is not supporting that, it's going to fail. It's a lot of money wasted, a lot of GPU cycles wasted. Right, so that's essentially yeah. the message we're trying to get up into the upper upper end of the stack. And a lot of value not realized. I think that's a such a good point. Speaking of solar systems and galaxies and things rolling around, NASA is one of the companies that trusts you. I'm curious what customer examples, and this is me asking you both as someone running marketing, but also just as a human being, because you get to see some really interesting use cases of AI at scale. What are some of your favorite examples that you've gotten to see within your own community? Wow, there are so many. It's, it's kind of hard to pick one or two, but let's start with the one that anybody, the common person out there can understand, right? So drug discovery. Mm -hmm. So just think about that. In my lifetime, drug discovery has been about an eight to 10 year process, brand new d drug discovery. And it takes $2 billion per drug that gets over the line with That's the FDA. One of the more reasonable ones. It's like five to $6 billion oh, in total sometimes. But, okay. And yeah, this is, yeah, I think that's the average. Yeah, and this is more so for rare genetic diseases. Yeah. Right, the common ones <laughs> everybody's in because it affects the general population, but the rare yeah. genetic diseases that have you know, a thousand kids, et cetera, it takes a long time. Those kids are not kids anymore by the time those drugs come out into the market. Yeah. Right? So what we're doing now is accelerating that process from eight to 10 years to a year or less. Whoa. It's, it's life changing, right? Because of AI. Because that's how much, not just life changing, that's life saving. Yeah, life saving. In too. some cases. Exactly. So, so I, I love those type of case studies, the genomics research uh, case studies where you're, you can sequence the DNA in no time compared to the months or weeks that was earlier, right? Mm -hmm. uh, just, uh, I, I think we're going to get rare insights into, into human genomic research in the next two to three years that will blow our minds with, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the promise of you'll get to know everything about yourself with a drop of blood, I think mm -hmm. will become true in the next five years, uh, I think. So I think that's one use case that I, I really love. To I mean, you're talking about targeted at scale use cases. Absolutely. That's something that they couldn't do before because it was too hard, not enough compute or too much dollars to stand up or it's it's all all the entire stack not enough compute networking couldn't handle it data infrastructure was read intensive 
right? And, yeah. and, and the, the data warehousing tools that are there were built for structured data, right? This is all unstructured data mostly. Mm -hmm. So you need a data infrastructure that can handle massive amounts of unstructured data, videos, imaging, you know, these complex 3D yeah. models, quickly analyze it and put out results. Okay, you guys have done the work, we've got the story from the CEO, we can see what you guys have I've been following DDN for a while, the three areas you're working on. Take this to the customer. What is the customer conversations as you talk to them? Okay, I got needs, different approaches that you mentioned. What are they looking for? And when they look at the data platform, because now you have a, you know, other people saying, we have, we have the best data, everyone has the, everyone has the best data platform here. So, I, get into the specifics. Is it rights? Is it just viability? Is it just, is it all NVIDIA? What about other things? Take us through the customer conversations. Wow, I'm getting a lot of loaded questions today. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, cool. Welcome to theCUBE. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, yeah, you have yes. a CUBE. Yeah, exactly. He was you know, on 2016 at EMC, EMC World. Like I guess that he's the VIP yeah. OG. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, you know. So, DDN has the data intelligence platform, and you and Alex had this banter about is it artificial intelligence or is it data intelligence, right? So, artificial intelligence has synthetic data, but that's still data. So it's still data intelligence in our opinion, right? End of the day, without data, there, there is no artificial intelligence or organic or real intelligence. It's, it's all about the data infrastructure. So how do we play? End of the day, John and Savannah, it's, it's about business outcomes. All the Absolutely. massive billions of dollars that are being pumped into AI is about how can it accelerate my business outcomes? So we, I started my career writing terrible co COBOL code on mainframes, okay? <laughs> and I bless you for that. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah. Some of that code still runs. So we, we took the compute power of like mainframes, et cetera, and the PC world brought it to our, our computers, our, our Macs and our PCs. I think AI, what AI is going to do is high performance computing and the supercomputers are now going to be at home because of that, right? But how do you derive business outcomes from it? So our value proposition at DDN is to connect the dots from the data center all the way up to your LLMs, inferences, and your microservices. Accelerate that 10x. Save you, you know, a lot of money in trying to run that, right? There is a scarcity of GPUs. Let's not, let's not hide that. It's, yeah. it's not easily available. People want to drive business outcomes quickly. Right? So you got to extract as much as you can with your existing GPUs, if, whether it's as a service or if you own them, doesn't matter. We help with that, right? We help with ensuring that your inferences are super efficient, super specific, and you don't end up wasting a lot of GPU cycles when you're inferencing. So that's our value proposition yeah. in, a, in a short nutshell. Yeah. And you're a companion to the NVIDIA Talk about the relationship between their penetration and what you guys are coming in uh, from a growth perspective. You mentioned it before we came on camera, that that is a tailwind for you. Talk about that. This is an important dynamic. Oh, absolutely. So uh, NVIDIA and DDN have been partners for eight years now. So even before NVIDIA was this well known. Even before it was super cool yeah, to be partners with NVIDIA? I think they were always super cool. It's just the <laughs> world got to know they about that. They were them. super cool to us nerds. Right. Yes. I don't know that my mom would have known the name NVIDIA. Eight years ago, yeah. we're just throwing that out exactly. there. Not that so, so we've been building reference architectures with them for, for a very long time. We're tried and tested with the NVIDIA infrastructure and ecosystem for a very long time. In fact, NVIDIA uses us. There is no bigger testament than NVIDIA using us in their super pods. In their biggest AI factories that they're building, DDN is the de facto standard data intelligence platform for them, right? So we take that blueprint and we offer it up to our customers saying who better than NVIDIA to tell you, you know, how you have to deploy your AI efficiently, right? So that's our, yeah. our big advantage with NVIDIA. Also, NVIDIA, you know, is in the, yeah. in the mindset of Jensen Huang, right? He's super methodical, he's a technologist. They're a technology first company, so is DDN. So it just jives really well. You know, the, the mm -hmm. technologist to technologist who work together for a very long yeah. time in the HPC business, Seen the hard times and the good times, <laughs> and, and now yeah, yeah. taking advantage of this huge AI wave that's happening. Awesome. That's very cool. I noticed that you took a little time off recently to be a dad. Yes, I did. Which is a very cool. Nice to see that, and congrats on the little Thank one. You. Thank you. What do you hope 20 years from now, all this hard work you're putting in and all these partnerships does for your child? Wow, that's, that's a great question and an important question that we all have to answer in the world of AI, right? Yeah. Uh, whilst there is all these great benefits we talk about with AI, we have to watch out for 
you know, how it can be misused towards the future of our children as well. So there is that element to it. But having said that, what I will tell my kid, uh, my son is, listen, prompt engineering is the future. My dad told me coding is the future. I, I became a computer scientist. Even though I'm a CMO, I, I'm a computer scientist, right? I wrote code, right? And that look at you. It, it, it forms a logical way to think about yeah. things, and you, you get that analytical aspect in your head. Prompt engineering is the future. So any kids watching, you know, thinking about what I want to do and, and how I'm going to embrace AI and use it to my advantage, learn how to prompt engineer, how to use AI to your advantage so you can affect how the world changes in the, in the future, right? Yeah. You can affect how AI behaves by behaving well with it. Yeah, and the productivity gains from the prompting will give the intellectual capital, it scales your mind basically and your ability to execute. Exactly, there's this fear that a lot of jobs will be lost. Look, let's be honest, there will be a few of the, the basic level jobs that will be lost, of course, but what happens is it's, it's, it's servitude. You want, you want to up-level the yeah. labor force to do something more meaningful uh, for the world, right? We believe, I should say I believe, that eventually, I don't know how many number of years, but eventually most of us will not have to work because AI is running most of the jobs for us. We're, we're essentially doing what we love day to day. I'm just here for it. AI, AI, the governments are running it or whoever is running it for you and most of the day-to-day -day chores and things that take up a lot of our time that we don't really enjoy will just be moved out to robotics and AI so we can actually do what we love every day. Yeah, create, play, spend time with our families. Yes. So many things there. All right, last question for you, Joe. That was a wonderful answer, by the way. When we're hanging out next year, which I think might not even be all the way at supercomputing, I think it'll be a little bit sooner than that if everything goes well. What do you hope to be able to say then that you can't yet say today? I'd love to say how some of our initial large-scale deployments are now driving those business outcomes I spoke of. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, any technological wave or investment in technology is about business outcomes. If it's not driving those outcomes, then it has failed. Yep. Right? Yes. So we are looking forward to seeing some of the ca use cases that I wasn't able to talk about today because it's all still happening in the back end come to fruition and we're able to put out stats uh, in, in healthcare and manufacturing, you know, how autonomous driving has changed 5x, yep. manufacturing yeah. has improved 10x, you know, give you real data points in various industries and bring AI to the mainstream enterprise next year. So that's my hope. Awesome. We're going to keep making it real, Jyoti. We cannot wait to have that conversation with you ASAP and, and, and highlight some of those customer stories that you're having. Thanks so much for coming to hang out with us today. No, thank you for having me. It's always great to be on the Cube. <laughs> Back again. It's, it's a the best place to be in technology <laughs> broadcast. Yeah, it is fun. 15 go years. Go ahead and pull that Y'all are that it's first. OG, OG on yes, the Cube, yes, 2016. Yes. yes, and thank you, John. This has been another fantastic event. Yeah, a phenomenal event. The Cube team has been phenomenal. Production's awesome. Shout Chefs out. have been phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Brendan, Andrew, Tony, Alex, and Frank Say there. We also had Dave Vellante on the show with us and all week. It's been an absolutely Kristen Nicole was here. seamless broadcast. Oh, yeah. We had the VIP show up of Kristen. I mean, we, yeah. we, we really had the dream team down here in Atlanta. It's been, it's been super fun. Also fun to be close to my namesake. Most importantly, thank all of you for tuning in wherever you might be around the world. We've been hanging out here in Atlanta, Georgia at Supercomputing 2020. For my name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching the Cube, the leading source for enterprise tech news. I'll see you.